Valves are used to control the flow of fluids in piping systems. When a valve is opened, fluid flow begins. When a valve is closed, the flow is stopped. Gate valves are primarily used for turning fluid flow on and off and for isolating equipment. They're normally installed in applications where straight flow is desired. A gate valve generally has a relatively long body and stem, which extend some distance beyond the piping that the valve is connected to. A gate valve typically has two seating surfaces and a disc that fits between them. The disc is raised and lowered, like a gate, to start or stop the flow of fluid through the valve. Gate valves work best when they operate in either the fully open or the fully closed position. When a gate valve's disc is completely raised, fluid flows straight through the valve with little obstruction. However, if the disc is partially raised, a space opens on either side of the disc and fluid passes under the disc. Many gate valves have what is called a rising stem. In most cases, the stem rises as the hand wheel is turned counterclockwise and lowers when the hand wheel is turned clockwise. The amount of stem protruding from the hand wheel indicates the position of the disc. If the stem is all the way down, the valve is closed. If the stem is all the way up, the valve is open. On a gate valve with a non-rising stem, the stem and hand wheel rotate together. The disc is threaded to the lower portion of the stem. The disc then moves up or down the stem as the hand wheel is rotated, but the stem does not move up or down. Because no allowances for stem movement are necessary, a non-rising stem is useful in applications where space is limited. Ball valve has a disc with ports that are aligned with the inlet and outlet of the valve body to either allow or stop flow through the valve. As its name indicates, a ball valve's disc is called a ball because of its shape. The ball is highly polished and its surface is smooth and uniform. A ball valve's disc fits snugly into a ring-shaped two-part seat. The two parts of the seat are called wipers. They're usually made of nylon or another elastic self-sealing material that prevents leakage. One wiper fits on the inlet side of the body and the other fits on the outlet side. During operation, there's little friction between the highly polished smooth ball and the wipers. So ball valves generally don't require lubrication. Ball valves are commonly used for on-off applications. A butterfly valve also uses a disc that rotates. However, the disc in a butterfly valve does not have ports. Instead, the valve has a thin, flat, circular metal disc that is rotated to open or close the valve. Many valves can be operated manually with hand wheels or with operating handles. But valves often use mechanical operators or actuators to open and close. With these devices, valves can be turned on, off, or throttled more quickly and easily than with manually operated devices. Also, when mechanical operators are used, valves can be repositioned from a central, remote location, such as a control room. Common types of mechanical operators include pneumatic, hydraulic, and electric. Pneumatic operators, or actuators, use air pressure to produce motion that positions a valve. There are several different kinds of pneumatic operators. A diaphragm actuator is a pneumatic operator that uses air acting on a flexible diaphragm to position a valve. The diaphragm is raised or lowered by variations in applied air pressure. There are different designs of diaphragm operators, but they all allow flow to be automatically regulated as system conditions change. So these types of operators are often used for throttling valves. Typically, the diaphragm separates two chambers within the body of the mechanical operator. A spring holds the valve open or closed, depending on its design, when no air pressure is being exerted on the valve. 
Disc movement is adjusted by varying the air pressure that's applied to the diaphragm. As air pressure is changed, the valve is opened or closed. This piston actuator is a pneumatic operator that uses a piston inside an airtight cylinder to position a valve. It's generally more suitable than a diaphragm actuator for jobs that require relatively long stem travel or more force to position a valve. A hydraulic operator uses the pressure of a liquid against a piston to position a valve. A hydraulic operator generally develops more force than a similarly sized pneumatic operator. Some of the force exerted on a pneumatic operator is used up in compressing the air in the operator. But since, for the most part, liquids aren't compressible, more of the force exerted on a hydraulic operator goes directly towards positioning the valve. The power supplied by hydraulic operators makes them very suitable for the operation of large valves. An electric operator uses electricity to position a valve. There are various designs for these types of operators. One type of electric operator is a solenoid actuator, or simply a solenoid. It's used for on-off control of a valve. Because solenoids can go from fully open to fully closed quickly, they're particularly useful for emergency shutoff valves. But because they have no intermediate or in-between position, they can't be used to throttle a valve. Valves that have to be throttled often use operators that are driven by electric motors. The electric motor drives a set of gears that controls the travel of the valve stem, which, in turn, positions the valve. When the motor is energized, the valve stem begins its rotation to raise or lower the disc. Enclosed in the body of many electric motor operators is a torque switch, a limit switch, or both, to ensure that the valve is positioned properly without being damaged. This is a torque switch. Basically, torque is a turning or twisting force. A torque switch cuts off electric current when the amount of turning force caused by the motor reaches a preset limit. This is a limit switch. It cuts off electric current to the motor when the valve reaches a preset position. A limit switch may be used to indicate the position of a valve and to ensure that power is stopped when the valve is in the fully open or the fully closed position. Some electric motor operators can be operated manually with a hand wheel if necessary. Typically, the motor operator has a lever that connects the hand wheel to the gears and at the same time disconnects the motor from the gears.